Hello everyone and welcome back to my series on neural networks from scratch. So this is part two where we look at the gradient descent process and see how the backpropagation algorithm works. And finally we will derive the equations for the backpropagation algorithm. And in the next part we will implement our own neural network from scratch using just Python. So in the previous video we saw how a neural network works, uh, the general form of the feed forward equation and we learned some general notations and saw how we can predict the output using matrices for m samples in one single iteration. So this was the feed forward equation that we saw in the last video. Uh, ZL where L is the layer number is equal to the weights multiplied by the output from the previous layer plus a bias and the output of this layer is given by an activation function which is applied to ZL. So let my output layer be L. So after running feed forward, we get our output Y bar. Next step is to find the error or cost in the predicted value by comparing it with the actual value. For this, we can use a cost function. Cost C is equal to one by M summation over I to M, a loss function applied to Y I and Y I bar. So here M is the number of samples and y is my actual value and y bar is my predicted value so here this function l is the loss function and it computes the error in a single predicted sample uh, y bar i and the corresponding actual value y i so my cost function c can be defined as the average of this loss value computed over all the m samples so our goal is to minimize the value of this cost function. So to do this, we will use the method of gradient descent. So we have this cost function and here, let's see what are the parameters that this uh, function depends upon. So M is a constant. Uh, y i is also a constant, uh, which is the target value. And Y i bar is our predicted value is equal to some activation function applied to W into A plus B. So I can say that my cost C depends upon the variables W and B since everything else here is a constant. And of course, A, a is the input value. I can write my cost C to be a function of W and B. So our goal here is to find the value of W and B such that the cost is minimum or ideally zero. A lower cost means our predictions are more closer to the actual value and hence it means it's more accurate. Before we start, you need to know that the learning equation or the equation we use to update the weights and the bias is this. So W equal to W minus a learning rate alpha times the partial derivative of my weights with respect to the cost C. Similarly for the bias B. So basically we will be using uh, these two equations to update our weights and biases in every epoch that we run or every iteration. You might have learned in high school classes that uh, the value of a function is the lowest when its uh, derivative is equal to zero. We use the same concept in gradient descent as well. So for simplicity here, let's assume that my cost here was dependent on a single function w uh, so that we can plot the graph in two dimensions. So here we have the cost equal to f of w on the y axis and my w which is the weight on the x axis. So the lowest value for this function would be at this particular point for this value of my weight. So my goal is to get somehow get to this value so that my cost is the least. So let's say our current value of W is right here and we will update W with each iteration so that at the end of all our iterations or epochs, W is somewhere around here. Now let's find the derivative of this function with respect to W at this particular point. So that is dou C by dou W and this derivative value is actually equal to the slope at this particular point. And this is actually dou C and this is actually dou W. So this height is basically the value at value of C at this point minus the value of C at this point and uh, the value of dou W is the value of W at this point minus the value of W at this point. So in this case, this slope has a positive value 
So according to our learning equation, value of W would be decreased, right? So this particular term is positive, alpha is a constant. And so the new value of W would be lesser than its initial value. That means that my W that was here somewhere here would decrease and move to somewhere here during the next iteration. So basically this is moving towards my goal. So if the value of W initially was somewhere here, then the slope at this point would look like this and this is a negative slope so what happens is that this term is negative which means that my new value of w would be greater than its previous value right w would be increased by some amount and again it's moving towards uh, this point so basically the sign of my slope or this uh, derivative term determines uh, if I should increase or decrease the value of W. Also one thing to note is that the magnitude of this slope term, right? So this actually tells us by how much the value of W should be updated at e each iteration. For example, when we were at this point, the slope was uh, large and our update uh, was this big, let's assume. Now, if I take the slope at this point, then its value, the magnitude of the slope would be much, much smaller than this. So the update that happens to W would also be much, much smaller. So we start from here, our updates uh, at each iteration get smaller and smaller. And finally, we reach the optimal value for W and we'll be oscillating somewhere around this region. So this same process happens for B as well. This whole process of finding the optimal value for the parameters W and B for which the cost function gives the lowest value is called gradient descent. Now let's see how backpropagation uses this concept of gradient descent to update the values of parameters in each layer of a neural network. So I have a, a two layer neural network here, this layer one and this layer two and I have uh, written down the computation that happens at each step uh, of this network. So these are all the computations that happen in my layer one, and these are all the computations that happen in layer two. And finally, we calculate our cost and we start the process of backpropagation. So the idea is that starting from the last layer, we go backwards and we calculate the value of the weights and the bias with respect to the cost okay and th this value will be used to update our actual weights using the learning equation so that would be equal to similarly uh, and in this layer also we calculate the uh, der partial derivative with respect to our cost so now let's see how we can derive these equations to calculate the values of these derivatives uh, and this is where the chain rule comes in the chain rule is basically, let's say if I have a function like y equals u square and where u depends on another variable, say x and the value of u is equal to, let's say x plus 2, then the derivative of dou y by dou x, y is dependent on u and u is dependent on x. So y is not directly dependent on x, right? So we can write this derivative value as dou y by dou u dou u by dou x. This link is like a chain and finally we end up with the value dou y by dou x. So let's see how we can apply this rule to our problem to calculate these derivatives. Now let's start from layer 2. So since this is my output layer, keep in mind uh, this value is actually my uh, predicted value y bar but I'll be uh, calling it as a2 so that uh, things are more consistent and clear and it'll be easier for us to derive the general equation. So since this is the output, I'll also have to calculate the cost here. So the cost is one by m i up one up to n, some loss function applied over the actual value and my predicted value. So here uh, a2i uh, represents a single element in my uh, vector a2 and there's not a square so keep in mind those uh, superscripts are always layer numbers so first we need to calculate the value of dou c by dou a2 this is a direct computation since uh, my cost directly depends on the value of a so this would be the derivative of whatever loss function that i'm using here next we need to calculate the value of dou c by dou z2 
here a depends on z2 and cos depends on a2 so applying the chain rule i can write do a2 by do z2 to do c by do a2 okay the value of this would be equal to so do a2 by do z2 is actually the derivative of my activation function applied to z2 times whatever value i get from this okay now let's calculate the value of my weights that is do c by do w2 so this would be equal to applying the chain rule again do z2 by do w2 since z depends on w and next would be do a2 by do z2 and do c by do a2 so the value of do z2 by do w2 is a1 and you can see that this value is actually equal to do c by do z2 so we will replace this with do c by do z2 okay so this we had already calculated in, in our previous step so one thing to notice here is the shape so the shape of do c by do w2 would have the same shape as w2 so that would be uh, neurons uh, as rows and number of inputs in the columns so this should actually be equal to whatever uh, value we get by finding the dot product here so the shape of a1 it would have the number of inputs as the rows and the number of samples in the columns okay do c by do z2 would have the same shape as z2 so z2 has the shape number of neurons in the rows and m columns okay so we cannot find the dot product directly so this has to be rewritten into do c by do z2 so this would come first so that my neurons come first m times uh so for m to come in the rows i would have to find the transpose of a1 okay so this is a1 transpose so this uh, reordering is done only so that the shape of do c by do w2 matches up with the shape of uh, w2 okay and this is very very important so if your shape is not matching then you'll get a lot of errors and uh, everything will basically go wrong so make sure that uh, you check uh, at every step that you're getting the shapes right so that your dot products come out correctly similarly i can find the value of uh, do c by do b2 that is equal to do z2 by do b2 into so do a2 this is actually the same as do c by do z2 now uh, the value of uh, do z2 by do b2 is actually one right because this does not have any coefficient so this is actually one into do c by do z2 so uh, we found the value of our derivatives so we simply calculate the new way new values for w and b okay using our learning equation which we already saw so now uh, let's uh, do the same for layer one also in layer one i have do c by do a1 and this would actually be equal to do z2 by do a1 because a1 is dependent upon z2 and then do a2 by do z2 do c by do a2 so this is equal to do z2 by do a1 would give me w2 times this this is actually again equal to do c by do z2 right and just to match the shapes again we would have to rewrite this as w2 transpose dot product with do c by do z2 so this uh, transpose is applied to w2 just so that uh, the shapes match up while finding the dot products so one thing to notice here is that uh, while we are implementing this in code we will find this value do c by do a1 uh, in layer 2 okay and we will return this to layer 1 so in layer 1 we are we already have the value of do c by do a1 so similarly i can write do c by do z2 is equal to the derivative of activation function on z1 and do c by do a1 now i can find the value of do c by do w1 so if i was to apply the chain rule directly 
then this would be dou z1 by dou w1 so this is uh, from the first layer and this a1 is passed to the next layer right so it would be dou z2 by dou a1 into dou a2 by dou z2 into dou c by dou a2 you can imagine if there were like uh, 10 or 15 layers how long this calculation would be right but uh, passing this this value of dou c by dou a1 from our previous layer makes this calculation much much more easier so instead of like doing this whole thing all i have to do is uh, whatever i did in the previous layer right so this would actually be dou c by dou z1 into so here since this is uh, my input or the first layer right i don't have an a0 so this is actually equal to x transpose okay so here this was a1 that is the input from my previous layer so since this is my first layer the input is basically x and just like we did here i can write the value of dou c by dou b1 is dou c by dou z1 itself okay okay by the way i made a mistake here this is not z2 this is z1 now if i had a uh, one more layer before this then again i would calculate the value of dou c by let's say dou a0 and pass it to the next layer right so the previous layer basically so here i have written the general form of all the computations that we do for back propagation in a given layer l okay so this is already given from our previous layer right dou c by dou al and we compute the value of dou c by dou zl which is this and using this value we can easily compute the values of dou c by dou wl and dou c by dou bl okay and finally we compute the value of dou c by dou a l minus 1 and return it to the next layer so this is the back propagation algorithm basically i think uh, the main problem for confusion in this algorithm is where uh, just this calculation of derivatives part so to learn this easily i would suggest simply writing down the equations in terms of the derivatives uh, like this and not actually finding the actual values of each of these derivatives right so this would depend upon the loss function I use and this would depend upon the activation function I use, right? So these are different in every case. So that's it for this video. So in our next video, we'll create our own neural network using all these equations that we learned in these uh, two videos. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel and like this video and I'll see you in the next one.